What's happening? Crypto fam, happy, happy Monday. Good morning and welcome back to Love for Crypto. I'm Scott. It's a pleasure to have you here. I appreciate you taking the time out to consume the content, so thank you. This morning, I'm covering Ripple, seen as leading, leading remittance provider in association of Southeast Asian Nations Report. Also looking at who should... Who should tackle and address stablecoin regulations? The Biden administration or Congress? Or the people? A referendum? General consensus? No. Should we do it demo? <laughs> Democratic. Blah, blah, blah. I can't fucking say that word. Democratic. Fuck you. Anyway, right, Ripple are seen as leading remittance provider in association of Southeast Asian reports. Um, a recent report on financial technology and inclusion in Asian cites Ripple as a notable remittance provider. The research undertaken by Global Connections um, on the University of Cambridge notes that the remittance industry saw a shift to digital with startups developing new cross-border payments and settlements. The report then cites Ripple as the most notable in cross-border payments, along with Neum, also a Ripple partner. Smashing it. Um, this tweets out the recent report, Financial Technology and Inclusion, out of Cambridge Associates Remittance in Poverty Reduction. And specifically cites Ripple as the most notable fintech along with Neom, who's also a Ripple partner. So they're not just highlighting how well it's doing cross-border payments, they're actually highlighting how well it's impacting poverty reduction, it's helping people. It's helping people. Yeah? So ASEAN, A-S-E-A-N, refers to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, an international organization that brings together 10 Southeast Asian states, Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Mana, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. All into one body. Countries in the Asia and Pacific have risen globally in terms of offering quick payments using digital banking systems, ad exploration and invention of alternative payment rails to better facilitate both cross-border and domestic quick payments contributes to the region's growing prominence. It's fascinating. Singapore, which is one of the top, uh, it's one of the world's top five most competitive financial centres, had established clear and effective government legislation, as well as support for innovative payment technology, resulting in a 58% growth in quick payments in 2021. The Philippines too is financially competitive where virtual currency transactions increased by 71% between 2020 and 2021 owing to new solutions such as crypto as crypto assisted remittances and digital payment options. So there's a cheeky little update on the Ripple SEC case at the back at the bottom. And the much-awaited individual defendants' answers have been filed, thus fixing the deadline for the SEC's position on additional discovery to April 15, 2022, and the deadline for the joint proposed schedule in order of April 22, 2022. Someone just let me know when that ripple shit's over, mate. The link's in the description if you want to chase that ripple shit, but the being, um, it was only a matter of time. It's not the they're not the first people that come out raving about Ripple's remittance. They're not the first people coming out raving about blockchain remittance. Um, it's literally just the beginning with all that kind of stuff. Um, it's it's nice to see Ripple getting some recognition though. Now the big one for me: Should Biden administration or Congress address stablecoin regulation? The Democrats are divided apparently. I've got one thing to say to this. Have you asked the people that are going to be using the currency? 
have you asked the people that you're issuing the currency for? I mean, this shouldn't this be some sort of referendum? So currently, Democrats are divided on whether the Biden administration or Congress should be directly addressing stablecoin regulation. There's questions surrounding whether the dollar-pegged asset should fall under the umbrella of existing rules or whether new regulations are necessary. Since October 2021, stablecoins have grown approximately 500%, according to the Biden administration. Despite consensus regarding the need for federal intervention in the stablecoin market, <clears throat> lawmakers are playing a guessing game as to when to intervene. Kind of like the SEC, where Ripple wanted to watch for seven years, seven or eight years, they fucking watched what Ripple were doing. And then all of a sudden, fucking brought them in. So. It's a relatively narrow segment of the crypto universe, and it would be very constructive if we provided some regulatory certainty and clarity, said Senator Pat Toomey. A seasoned member of the Senate Banking Committee, Senator Toomey has, has continued to advocate for regulation via banks to address the current issues associated with stablecoins. So, Senator Toomey's proposed bill Last week, the Senate Banking Committee released a draft bill where Toomey stated that he wants stablecoin issuers to adopt clear redemption policies and implement disclosure mechanisms surrounding reserve asset backing. He also recommends that issuers meet liquidity and asset quality standards by allowing stablecoin issuers to operate according to state rules. Senator Toomey believes this would address many of the industry's concerns, specifically the recent actions of the CFTC against Tevor. So the Democrats are hesitating, hesitant to legislate stable coins. I mean, get a move on. What, what? I hate how much fucking conflict there is in politics. Whether national politics, geopolitical politics, is fucking global politics. I fucking hate how much conflict there. It's like, listen, if you don't like someone, stay the fuck away from him. <laughs> Do you know what, right? It, se segregation is coming back. I feel segregation is coming back because it literally does come back. Right, if you don't like him, Listen, I don't like your, you stay the fuck over there. Okay, mate, I don't like you, so you stay the fuck over there. I don't want to live like you, so you fuck off over there and live the way you want to live. I'll live like me over here. We'll have a little fuck, well, as, as long as, I mean, do we even really need to trade with, with other people and see other people? If the algorithms can be the middleman and we've got interoperability through currencies, I can see... So, local council rates, like back in the 70s, I can see them coming back to local, to small local self-governing communities through blockchain technology. It's just going to take a couple of fucking decades to get there, I think. Someone with their head screwed on to actually suggest it and that. And in the meantime, they're just going to rape the money for all they can. They really, they really, really are. So, in the absence... Um, some Democrats are hesitant to be proactive in addressing this type of legislation. Further to pass a bill that addresses the wider range of regulatory issues related to cryptocurrency according to the Wall Street Journal. There's a hyperlink in the, in the article, link in the description. In the absence of any congressional action, the Biden administration said that it would encourage Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's Financial Stability Oversight Council to recognize elements of stablecoin processing as being systematically important, excuse me, excuse me, systematically important for the stability of financial markets. Ultimately, this could result in a tighter oversight of stablecoin assets, which some Democrats prefer to be legislative structures that currently have partisan support, bit partisan. It's boring. It's boring to fucking read about a load of fucking knobheads 
who literally just don't give a shit about the people they govern, govern, fucking govern, govern. Who the fuck do they think they are? They're at like, they work for us. You act like they've earned to rule us. They're not a fucking king. Not that we haven't killed kings in the past. They're taking the piss with all these, all these energy prices and all that shit, and, 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 and it goes way too far to even bother going into. It fucking pisses me off. So I'd rather just go to Mars, mate. I'd either kill them all or go to Mars. Is, 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 is that, that's kind of like the two options. So we're kind of trying to blank it all out, me. But at the end of the day, it's fucked. These bastards just rape and pillage us. They act like they care. We like to act like we've got a democracy. Bullshit. Bullshit. 400 years ago, upset with a king, took his fucking head off. I was like them apples, Charles. I was like them apples, Charles. Hey? Seeing Charles? Oh, yeah, you can't speak because you've got no fucking head. Oh, what's that? Charles, Charles II, your son, you, 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 fuck off, fuck off to France, this is what they did, and this is what I mean, I don't want to live, we're not having that, so you can fuck off, just go away, fuck off, go find somewhere that lives how you want to live, mate, and that'll accept you, because we don't fucking want you anymore, so fuck off, that literally happened 400 years ago, if you don't believe me, Google the fucking execution of Charles the first. It's fucking there for everyone to see. 1649, I believe they did it. It was like them apples, Charles. Well, I'd be giving Boris a bag of them apples right fucking now. Like, listen, Boris, see that noose over there? You're either getting in it or going the fuck home, mate. Which one do you want to do? Do I fuck off home and never come back? Don't ever come back to Westminster, to any of it, because you're not a politician anymore, mate. You're not a prime minister anymore, mate. Don't so go to fuck home. If you want to remain a prime minister, we'll stick you in the noose and you're fucking done. So, it's kind of up to you, mate. You think If you think you're a good prime minister, you've been acting morally, and all your constituents and all the bullshit and all the... They'll be in the queue behind you, mate. All lining up for the fucking noose. Anyone who thinks what you do is fair. Is, it'll, it'll be getting it with you, mate. And then who's next? Who's fucking next? Every single one of you. Fuck off all. Before you're in the noose. The lucky... You know, mate, probably would get the axe out in the end. A fucking noose would take too long. <laughs> Untying the fuckers and that. They'd go home. We wouldn't have to kill it. It makes me sound like a savage as fuck murderer that, but you wouldn't it wouldn't get to the point where you'd hang them. You'd behead them. They would go home. They would accept that they've been knobheads. They would give up their job and they would go home. Oh, you can't just do that, Scott. We can't just do that, Scott. We took the king's head off. In four hundred years ago, we took the king's head off. Don't tell me what we can and can't do to a fucking prime minister when we can take a king's head off and exile his son. You're talking out your ass. If you think that we can't civil war this shit and iron it out a little bit, you are talking out your ass. You've been brainwashed. You've been brainwashed to think there's no way you're doing that. You, you're fucking scared of them. You're fucking scared of them. And rightly so, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I blame fucking them. That's why they'll be queuing up for the noose, and not you. It's, you know, ain't gonna put the people who voted for them in the fucking queue at the noose. You put the bastards who were horrible lying twats, who were benefiting off everyone, from the homeless guy and his dog to the fucking richest person. They're benefiting off everyone. They just benefit too much off the little person and not enough off the bigger person. They say bigger person, I meant wealthier. They're not bigger people. They don't think I meant that. <laughs> Anywho, it's fucking annoying. 
and it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I truly believe that it shouldn't be the Biden administration because they'll they could be gone soon. Different administration, and they they might think differently. So it's got to be a big umbrella straight away. Ask the people what they fucking want from their currency. You horrible twats. <sighs> Let's just go to my. I'm, I'm, I'm going Spain, Portugal, Canada, or Mars. I'm going one of them in the next decade. In the next decade, I am either going to Spain, Portugal, Canada, or fucking Mars. I'm going to fuck off in the, middle, in the middle of a forest or Martian desert and just fucking stay there till I die. Yeah. Away from knobheads. <laughs> Who's with me? <laughs> it's going to make a Martian colony. Martian crypto colony, mate. And now we're going to get there. You know the dance. Invest in yourself. Invest in the internet of value. Doesn't matter what you're worth as long as you're happy. Don't care what anyone says. I could be sat in a, be uh, uh, could be sat in a Bentley now if I wanted. But it wouldn't necessarily make me happy. You know it won't. My little fiesta's where it's at. Chase happiness as your riches, not a bank balance. That your level of happiness should be how you gauge riches, not like how big your house is, what your neighbours think of it. Is your garden bigger than theirs? Is your car worth more? Have you paid your car off yet? Do you even own your fucking house? Do you own the land your house is on? No, no, no one cares about our bullshit. No one really cares about that bullshit. Smile, be happy, be grateful that we've seen the sun again. And it's as simple as that. But, finger up to all them fucking wankers who govern us. Yeah. <laughs> Invest in yourself, internet of value, live long and oddle it all. Never let it go, baby. Get it steak, get it baked, get it in the pot. Feed the pot. Until the pot's reward feeds you. Yeah, wishing health and happiness to you and yours. Enjoy your week. Take care. And I'll see you on the next one.